the issues of physical storage must be considered at the internal level in contrast to the logical and conceptual levels of database systems. The internal level is concerned with the way the data is actually stored. There are various database components at the internal level which are responsible for the storage organization and physical data management, example, file and disk managers. The processing at the internal level may also be referred to as physical database operations. The figure below, figure 6.1 illustrates an architecture of a database system. Physically, databases are almost invariably stored on some kind of direct access media such as magnetic or optical disks. The DBMS can then retrieve, update, and process the stored data as needed. Different types of data storage can typically be classified into the following three categories. Primary storage. The fastest storage medium such as cache and main memories. Secondary storage. The storage media in this category include magnetic disks which normally cost less but are of larger capacity. Tertiary storage. The storage media in this category are mainly used for backup and archiving purposes. Databases typically store very large amounts of data that must survive over long periods of time. A large majority of databases have to be stored permanently on secondary storage most commonly magnetic disks. A large majority of databases have to be stored permanently on secondary storage most commonly magnetic disks for the following reasons. In most practical applications, databases are too large to be held entirely in main memory. Primary storage is often called volatile storage, where its contents may be lost in some circumstances, such as power failure. The cost per storage unit is much lower for secondary storage than for primary storage. In most cases, only a small part of a database is needed for processing at any instance in time. In this unit, we will also describe the techniques used to store large amounts of structured data on disks. These techniques are important for database designers, DBS, database administrator, and implementers of a DBMS. Database designers and DBS must know the advantages and disadvantages of each storage method in order to develop and operate a DBMS for a specific application. A typical database application will always need to access the database and retrieve some data for processing. Whenever a certain portion of the data is needed, it must be located on disk, loaded to main memory for processing, and then written back to the disk if changes have been made. There are a number of commonly used file organizations which can determine how the records of a file are physically placed on disk. In this unit, we will be discussing heap file, which places records on disk in no particular order, sorted sequential file, which holds records in a particular order based on the value of a specified field, hash file, which uses a hash function to decide where a record should be placed on disk. Magnetic disks are the most commonly used secondary storage. A single disk can have a storage capacity over 10 gigabytes. As technology improves, disk capacities continue to grow. Physical characteristics of disks. Regardless of their capacity, disks are all made of magnetic materials shaped as a thin circular disk. Such a thin disk may store information on just one of its surfaces, single-sided, or on both surfaces, double-sided. To increase storage capacity, disks are assembled into a disk pack, which may include 30 surfaces, or more as shown in figure 6.2a. Each track typically stores the same amount of information. It can be divided into equal size blocks, which include specially coded information to determine which block on the track follows each of the gaps, as shown in the figure 6.2b below. Performance measures of disks. 
the quality and performance of discs can be measured in the following four aspects. Capacity. Access time. Data transfer rate. Reliability. The measure of capacity is obvious. A larger disc is always preferred, provided it has satisfactory performance in the other three measures. In this section, we discuss the last three aspects. Access time is defined as the time period from when a read or write request is issued to when the data transfer actually starts. Access time equals seek time plus latency time. The data transfer rate is usually defined as the amount of information measured in megabytes that can be transferred in a second. A faster transfer rate will result in a smaller transfer time. Current disk systems typically support transfer rate from 1 to 5 megabytes per second. Reliability of a disk is measured by the mean time to failure. Basically, it is the time for which the disk has been working correctly divided by the number of failures that have occurred during the disk's working life. The typical mean time to failure of disks at the present range is from 30,000 to 800,000 hours, about 3.4 to 9 to 1.3 years. Disk Scheduling If several blocks from a cylinder need to be transferred, we may save time by requesting them in the order in which they pass under the read or write head. Physical File Organization it is concerned with organizing blocks on disk in a way that corresponds closely to the manner that we expect data to be accessed. Effective file structure. We will see the advantages and disadvantages of various structures in achieving the goal. Let's now see about double buffering. While one buffer is being read or written, the CPU can process data in the other buffer. This is possible because an independent disk input-output processor usually exists that, one started, can proceed to transfer a block between a buffer and disk independent of and in parallel to CPU processing. This technique is called double buffering, and it can improve disk access performance. Buffer Manager a buffer manager is created or implemented, which is a subsystem responsible for the allocation of buffer space, and operates in the following manner. It handles all requests for disk blocks. If the block requested is already in main memory, the address of the buffer is returned to the requester. If not, the buffer manager must load the block into main memory from disk and then pass the address of the buffer to the requester. An overview database access. The operations supported by the file manager on stored files normally include the following. Retrieve a stored record from a stored file. Replace a stored record within a stored file. Add a new record to a stored file and return the new record ID. Remove a stored record from a stored file. Create a new file. Destroy a stored file. Organizing Files and Records on Disk In this section, we will briefly define the concepts of records, record types, and files. Then, we will discuss various techniques for organizing file records on disk. Record and Record Type Record is a unit which data is usually stored in. In short, we may say that a record type corresponds to an entity type and a record of a specific type represents an instance of the corresponding entity type. The following is an example of a record type and its record. A specific record of the student type. Student 9901536 9, James Bond 1 Bond Street London Intelligence Services 9 fixed length records and variable length records in files. If every record in the file has the same size in bytes, the records are called fixed length records. If different records in the file have different sizes, the records are called variable length records. Variable length records may exist in a file for the following reasons. Although they may be of the same type, one or more of the fields may be of varying length. 
The records are of the same type, but one or more of the fields may be a repeating field with multiple values. If one or more fields are optional, not all records of the same type will have values for them. A file may contain records of different record types. In this case, records in the file are likely to have different sizes. For fixed length records, the exact size of each record can be determined in advance. As a result, they can easily be allocated to blocks. Also, we can identify the starting byte position of each field relative to the starting position of the record because each of such records has the same fields and the field lengths are fixed and known beforehand. We have seen that fixed length records have advantages over variable length records with respect to storage and retrieving a field value within the record. In some cases, therefore, it is possible and may also be advantageous to use a fixed length record structure to represent a record that may logically be a variable length. Allocating records to blocks. The records of a file must be allocated to disk blocks because a block is the unit of data transfer between disk and main memory. When the record size is smaller than the block size, a block can accommodate many such records. If a record has too large a size to be fitted in one block, two or more blocks will have to be used. B minus BFR times R bytes. If we do not want to waste the unused spaces in the blocks, we may choose to store part of a record in them and the rest of the record in another block. B equals E. R divided by BFR U blocks. Worry X U is the so-called ceiling function, which rounds the value X up to the nearest integer. It is not difficult to see that if the record size R is bigger than the block size B, the spanned organization has to be used. File headers. A file normally contains a file header or file descriptor providing information which is needed by programs that access the file records. The contents of a header contain information that can be used to determine the disk addresses of the file blocks as well as to record format descriptions which may include field lengths and order of fields within a record for fixed length and spanned records, separator characters, and record type codes for variable length records. Let's discuss on operations on files. Operations on files can usually be grouped into retrieval operations and update operations. The former do not change anything in the file but only locate certain records for further processing. The latter change the file by inserting or deleting or modifying some records. Typically, a DBMS can issue a request to carry out the following operations with the assistance from file or disk managers of course. Find or locate. Search is for the first record satisfying a search condition, a condition specifying the criteria that the desired records must satisfy. Read or get. Copies the current record from the buffer to a program variable. Find next. Search is for the next record in the file that satisfies the search condition. Delete. Deletes the current record and updates the file on disk to reflect the change requested. Modify. Modifies some field values for the current record and updates the file on disk to reflect the modification. Insert. Inserts a new record in the file by locating the block where the record is to be inserted. Let's continue on the next slide. Find all. Locates all the records in the file that satisfy a search condition. Find ordered. Retrieves all the records in the file in a specified order. Reorganize. Rearranges records in a file according to certain criteria. Open. Prepares a file for access by retrieving the file header and preparing buffers for subsequent file operations. Close. Signals the end of using a file. Before we move on, two concepts must be clarified. File organization. 
This concept generally refers to the organization of data into records, blocks, and access structures. Access method. It consists of a set of programs that allow operations to be performed on a file. In the following sections, we are going to study three file organizations, namely heap files, sorted files, and hash files, and their related access methods. Heap file organization. The heap file organization is the simplest and most basic type of organizations. In such an organization, records are stored in the file in the order in which they are inserted, and new records are always placed at the end of the file. The insertion of a new record is very efficient. It is performed in the following steps. The last disk block of the file is copied into a buffer. The new record is added. The block in the buffer is then rewritten back to the disk. Remember, the address of the last file block can always be kept in the file header. The search for a record based on a search condition involves a linear search through the file block by block, which is often a very inefficient process. If only one record satisfies the condition, then, on average, half of the file blocks will have to be transferred into main memory before the desired record is found. If null records, or several records, satisfy the search condition, all blocks will have to be transferred. To modify a record in a file, a program must find it. Transfer the block containing the record into a buffer. Make the modifications in the buffer. Then, rewrite the block back to the disk. As we have seen that, the process of finding the record can be time-consuming. To remove a record from a file, a program must find it. Transfer the block containing the record into a buffer. Delete the record from the buffer. Then, rewrite the block back to the disk. Again, the process of finding the record can be time-consuming. Physical deletion of a record leaves unused space in the block. As a consequence, a large amount of spaces may have to be wasted if frequent deletions have been taken place. An alternative method to physically deleting a record is to use an extra bit called deletion marker in all records. A record is deleted logically by setting the deletion marker to a particular value. A different value of the marker indicates a valid record that is not deleted. Search programs will only consider valid records in a block. Invalid records will be ignored as if they have been physically removed. No matter what deletion technique is used, a heap file will require regular reorganization to reclaim the unused spaces due to record deletions. During such reorganization, the file blocks are accessed consecutively and some records may need to be relocated to fill the unused spaces. An alternative approach to reorganization is to use the space of deleted records when inserting new records. However, this alternative will require extra facilities to keep track of empty locations. Both spanned and unspanned organizations can be used for a heap file of either fixed length records or variable length records. Modifying a variable length record may require deleting the old record and inserting a new record incorporating the required changes because the modified record may not fit in its old position on disk.